levels. And what's interesting is that so many, uh, actually, the more I looked, like, as, as much as I could find, I mean, almost all of Christ's miracles, he didn't just, like, go around, and I don't mean this in a blasphemous or disrespectful way, but you know, he didn't go around with, like, a magic wand and just saying, like, you're healed, you're healed. Actually, at least in majority of the circumstances I can think of that, I, that I've studied, he required that leap of faith, that act of faith. And the only times that I found that really someone was almost, you know, instantaneously, miraculously healed, it would be mentioned that their faith was so great. Like the, the woman yeah. who reached out in the crowd and grabbed um, Christ's robes, it describes that her faith was so strong, she knew if she could just touch him that she would be healed. But, however, other people, if someone came to Christ and said, you know, oh, my brother-in-law or so-and-so in the next town um, is deaf or blind or, you know, in a coma, this sort of thing, not, they're not waking up. Most of those times that, that Christ took action and performed miracles, it would require the individual to go wash, you know, or they would have to go gather something. Um, you know, even with feeding the multitudes, you know, turning the... The, the bread to feed the I think the five thousand or whatever he it was always he would ask people to go you know go get this or go do this or go you know perform this act and then he would perform the miracle and that was really interesting to me and it, it also gave me perspective of even you know as a Pisces son <laughs> we love to help people and give service and and that's the reason I, I you know, to be honest, transparent, why I was studying it is, is how, and whether you believe in Christ or not, you know, you can just see it for its, um, uh, its, you know, symbology, uh, the meaning of the story of just giving acts of service that I was studying it to see, you know, how did he even give love and give service? He didn't just go around wasting his energy and just, you know, giving of it with, without any cause. He asked people to participate in that healing process, to participate in the miracle process. And so it's just really interesting that, you know, why would it be any different for us here on this earth, you know, whether you believe in God or Christ or gods or, you know, spirits or angels and whatever it is, why would it be any different that, that they would just hand us life on a silver platter, that we wouldn't be asked to go wash in the river, to go gather, you know, the, the oil or to, to gather the bread or whatever it may be. And that's where we're all at. And... So I, I don't know, I think it, I'm enjoying this conversation <laughs> because I feel like every time you say something and it stimulates a thought process for me as well. Um, there's just so much to be said on this subject yeah. of this walking in faith, you know, living in faith. And allowing detours to come through too. I've, I've heard uh, in this show, this popular anime, uh, one of the final episodes of the season, um, the main character finally meets his dad and at the top of this tree and he's talking about he wants he's looking for something in front of him that he can't see like a whole new world that's like and, and the way he said it made it look like this world is just one small part of an even bigger world yeah and um, he was saying that you gotta enjoy the detours because that's where you find the things that you wanted, that you didn't know you needed more than what you wanted. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, we can be so focused on that destination that we, we forget to really enjoy the journey and not necessarily give focus to the things that we need to prepare in order to ma manifest our miracles yeah and um, i would say you know for those of you who struggle with with maintaining faith um it's always great to remind yourself why you walked on that path in the first place yeah always recenter yourself and you know remind yourself what it is you're doing this for which is why when you walk this path, this is the reason why you're supposed to be ordained. You're supposed to be called to do this path instead of yeah. just walking in and just being like, you know what, I'm a psychic now. Or <laughs> <laughs> I believe in this. Even, yeah. even in religious, even in religion, like people, are, you don't just get born again. Like you just, you, you get touched by the spirit. You, 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 it, you, it, there's an anointing that comes through. And this is something you could fall back on and, and just be re-inspired so that there's purpose in everything that you're kind of journeying through. And 
you know, it, it, it's still it's still very hard because there are dark forces that work to make you lose faith every day. Yeah, and I think that then that what that's what can create, especially right now. So many of us have been through the straight up gauntlet, not just this last year, but this last decade. I mean, it, it may, depending on you know your unique situation. You may have lost every relationship that ever meant anything to you. You may have abandoned, you know, your com t entire existence as you knew it. You know, who you were 10 years ago is so different than who you are now. So relationships, jobs, um, belief systems, view viewpoints and perceptions may be so drastically different. And it may feel like everything that was is now gone. And maybe throughout that process, there's been tremendous amounts of pain. Maybe you've been, you know, eaten up and spitting out, used, abused, lied to, cheated from, you know, stolen from, uh, lied to, just stabbed in the back, sabotaged, you name it, you know, and not to focus on the negative, but that's the reality that many of us have been in. And it's been hard and it hurts. And that creates wounds and that creates um, uh, predispositions to triggers and so in that process of this surrender I think it's also important that we embrace a and embody a sense of receptivity that feminine energy people feel the rise the rising of the feminine and there's a rising of the masculine as well and I think that's what brings about that kind of magnetic give and take that sense of reciprocity so most of us have been pushing we've been giving pushing doing 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 now we have to also be willing to receive to help bring about that balance of our masculine or our feminine even within us so maybe you're being offered right now the job of a lifetime maybe the partner of your dreams has just shown up but guess what many of us are so damaged and bruised and scarred that we're looking at exactly what we've been praying and working to manifest for so long. We're looking at these circumstances and going, is this real? Are they, is this gonna, you know, is this a lie? Is this a trick? Is, and I, I can resonate with this. I know many of you probably will too, even as of recently. You know, there's been a lot of beautiful things happening in my life, a lot of wonderful abundance. And I have found myself in the process at various points, second guessing, being like, is this just a trick? Like, am I about to get, you know, stabbed in the back again? Am I about to get swindled out of money? Am I about, you know, this like, just negative point, not that I live in the negative, but you know, I'm human, I'm human, just like all of us. And we have to right now, if you have been planting the seeds, you've been doing the work, rising up to be the best version of yourself, and now at last, you are seeing the fruits of your labor in a 3D, physical manifestation, you have to believe it. If it feels right, if it is exactly what you've been asking for, praying for, working towards, then you have to be willing to receive because if you do not, it will move along. Yeah. <laughs> this is, you know, I mean, why you if you keep trying to give someone a gift and they won't take it and they just keep throwing it back at you, ultimately you're probably just going to walk away with the gift. Like you can't give someone a gift if they're not willing to receive it. And so that's a whole part of that process is continuing to take the leaps in faith. And if that's what you've been doing and now you're seeing the fruits of that labor, believe it, receive it. If it feels right, it is meant to be. I, I can definitely um, relate with like being so disappointed that things just seem too good to be true and you just yeah. don't get too excited so yeah like oh what's gonna happen about this time mm -hmm. so uh it's, i feel this especially with love yeah and with connecting partnerships mm -hmm. it's like um people are afraid to really be in love again because it's like when's my heart gonna get broken this time and even if you're partnered <laughs> even if you're actually in a healthy relationship, you may still find yourself at this time in this duality, this dynamic of trying to accept, like, is this real? Or is my partner still, like, is the bomb gonna drop any moment? Are they gonna leave me at any moment? When, so that's where we have to tune in because if there's nothing else that is supporting that and it is just a fear, then we have to let it go. We have to release. But it's only, you know, on an individual level that you can listen to that. If sometimes when we get that feeling of it's too good to be true, it's for a reason. And those are positive uh, warning signs to like let you know, you know, move along. But sometimes when we get that feeling, it is our own insecurities, our own fears from these broken hearts. So you just gotta tune in. 
and you have to be willing to receive. Especially, especially in a period like now where these are these dreams are being made real. Yeah. Not, of course, to like finally celebrate, but to like give us something to move forward with. Yeah. As, as you know, we've been so busy journeying that uh, it was it was amazing seeing all these ducks. <laughs> we got ducks and geese yeah. and everything everywhere. I wanted to turn the camera. To I know we almost we probably should get like some little B roll yeah. <laughs> so everybody can see. It, 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 it was a. Uh, it's it's amazing though to see this manifesting and like it, we've been so busy journeying that. Yeah. Sometimes you need to. Well, I guess that could be part one. <laughs> Uh, do you think that like just part one like or, how, how much more do you want to like what else do you want to say like I think we covered a lot I th we did that's what I'm saying it's like I don't I think we could make two parts out of that out like of that, that. Okay. like we could probably say a few more things and you know and then wrap it up and have a conclusion um and, and like split that I mean that was a I think that was pretty badass. I think yeah. there was a lot of a lot of good content there to help people. Let's do that then. Okay. Yeah, perfect. I forgot. Um, Let's see, what was the last thing you said? Um, oh, Neptune and Pisces. And, uh, yeah, so maybe we could. Um, uh, okay, so let me see. So um, it's recording right now? Mm hmm. Okay. That comes. <laughs> For those of you who aren't familiar, I'm a Pisces sun, and so I, I am so familiar with that energy. It's, you know, how I, I live my life, and especially being an eighth house sun. So it's it's always unknown, it's always unclear, it's always this kind of layer upon layer, you know, precept upon precept, you know, this type of, of life. And um, he is also, you know, being Gemini, you know, we understand this kind of this mutability, this unclear, this duality and, and the internal conflict and the uncertainty and, and seeing both sides and trying to make a choice and, and having actually to constantly, consciously make a choice which, you know, part of the world you're going to be participating in, you know, even if it's an internal one. So when we have this energy coming in, for those of you who do follow astrology, it's going to be... It's going to be important that you remember that, that we're all in this space, whether you're a Pisces, uh, you know, you have Pisces in your chart or you're a mutable sign or anything. It's, we're all going to be in this space where things aren't totally clear. It's not totally sure. Um, we're coming to this culmination. We're coming to the, the final, you know, steps of the, the harvest uh, season. For those of you who garden, I'm a gardener. And, you know, when you begin to, you're getting very close. You might even see the beginning of fruits starting to form. But that's not when you stop. If you just start neglecting your garden at that point, the plants are going to shrivel, the fruits are not going to continue to, to grow, and you will not get that harvest. Yeah. So if you can think about it that way, that's where we are right now. You don't know how many fruits are going to appear. You don't know how big they're going to be, how juicy they're going to taste. Like You don't know exactly what the full harvest will look like, which is what we're leading into for 2020. So for right now, it's just a matter of continuing to tend that garden because now things are actually starting to grow. We're starting, Things are starting to fruit. So go with that. Trust it. Don't at that point just be like, oh, my garden's going to die anyway, so I might as well just abandon ship. You have to continue to, 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 to walk the path and to do so in faith without full clarity or knowing and have a belief that it will feed you through the winter. <laughs> and so it's it's really quite beautiful and I at least in my closing words you know I really hope that 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 was um, hope it provided hope and inspiration for you guys that if you're feeling these types of feelings at this time and knowing that even Mike and I that you know may be experiencing different abundance in our life that we're feeling those feelings too that we're all experiencing this we're in it together and make sure you leave a comment to share with us what you're feeling um, what are your closing thoughts Mike well, I mean, um, you do reap what you sow. So if mm -hmm. if what you're s reap if what you're sowing doesn't reap, then you want to look at what you're sowing. Mm -hmm. But one thing that's so important is Neptune and Pisces can seem bittersweet. It's ultimately divine, but mm -hmm. the way that we are programmed is so outcome oriented yeah. that if we don't get a specific outcome, you're gonna think of it as a failure. Yeah. If you know people are so focused on getting up a harvest for their crops, but it's it's all in cycles. It's about harvesting it and then cutting it and then sowing it again and yeah. then cutting it. So you might harvest a huge, you might want to harvest huge crops, and then you put in all this work to 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 harvest these crops, 
and you realize at the end of the day you didn't harvest crap and you might see that as a failure when at the end of the day now you have the experience of knowing how to harvest crops yeah you can yeah. be put in a situation and you have the experience to teach others and you're still gaining something from it and, and i promise you this is what neptune's going to do to a lot of you neptune's yeah. going to draw you in with illusions and and with promises of what can be and you're going to go through the journey and then the the the, the fog is going to dissipate it's not going to be exactly what you thought it would be and it's not like neptune tricked you but it's more so the experience of getting there and that's the genius of neptune because when you realize it, it's like you got what you wanted but it's not like you thought it would be like you may not have gotten the outcome or maybe you do get the outcome but it's more so like the experience involved yeah. of getting there and, and so sit and reflect like, oh, this is why I had to be guided along this way. Because sometimes we don't know what we need and we have to go through certain experiences. So my final word really is don't don't let the way things seem, don't let the outcome, you know, deter you. Don't let what you think the outcome will be deter you because there's always surprises along the way. And just remember why you're walking in faith in the first place. Yeah. And and you know, it's it's no one's telling you to just walk completely blind because we have GPS systems to, to yeah. guide us along our way, but do allow for there to be random surprises, detours. Do allow for there to be um, the ability for you to, to walk forward in spaces that you're not sure of. And to walk forward with courage, knowing that you're supported. Because there's nothing to give evidence that you weren't supported. Even even in the traumatic experiences you've had, to where you've been able to gain lessons from. Yeah. The walking in faith is something that's meant to empower you and not fear you. And finding a home, a family, a tribe, in however that looks. Sometimes for some of us that isn't our, our actual, um, you know, family, our actual blood relatives, you know, sometimes it's places like this here in these communities, and so I think the greatest joy to help us navigate these these paths is just to, to, to love and be loved in return, and to, to have good friends. <laughs> Thanks guys, peace. They only call the most high when the most die. If I make a bird flap to get the dodo up, we'll both cry. Except for me, these tears make me feel a soul vibe Earth, wind, and fire Water on the mic, but we ain't both live Really, I'm dead Since I got a chain on, ain't no spirit there Then go get him one Young light bearer, they ain't even lit up one With that nine to five, I used to save a dime Worked two days for two jobs Remember we had went from 2K to true crime I'm the fucking king of all time You lame, low life Niggas go left because I never be with they plight all these fucking movements, boy, these wrongs don't make a right I could become ruler if the stars are just a line Make a comment just to throw it at the sky Who was like the beginning and the end?